So it's finished Brentford 1, Wolves 4. Really good, really interesting game to say. I know it's a cliche of a game in two halves, but it was really interesting the way the contestant performances were. I'll obviously get into that more in a minute. A few key points to start with. So first 15 minutes, uh, I thought we were really strong. Loads of second balls. We won Mate Lamina, Gajero Gomez, Kuna. Kuhn, uh, so those 50-50 challenges, we won loads of those in the first 15 minutes. Uh, Huang's movement was really strong at the start as well, running behind. He was always been good at moving in behind him before he came to Wolves. Uh, but we just weren't picking out the passes. He's placed so much confidence now. For the second goal, he's that touch back inside. He's a player well in form. Uh, he took his goals really well. Unfortunately, he went off injured. But um, from what I've seen on social media since then, it sounds like he's come out and said he's OK. He's back. So he should be plenty involved next game. So that's too much of a worry. Uh, Lamina, really strong again today in midfield, led by led by performance. Almost like a captain's performance. I know he's not like a captain, but a captain-like performance. Scoring goals now as well to his game. He's really, really kicked on this season. Uh, really impressed by him. He seems to cover so much grip, so much energy, and so much covers so much ground because he's played so many games in a short pace of time. Same with Joe Gomez, covering a lot of game, covering a lot of ground in lots of games, really close together. It's really important to see how they drop uh, if they drop off against Everton. Uh, I think we missed Dawson massively. The centre of the back three, and I think this is where a lot of our issues come in. Obviously, Santi Bueno came in, came into the centre of the back three. He's obviously the slowest of the three. Uh, Al Kilman, Bueno and Totti. So, so obviously he's in the middle. Now the key things here, I think this is what the problems were because two of the centre backs were having to cover um cover San, uh, cover Santi Bueno. They were playing really narrow. So Totti Gomez and, and, and Kilman, particularly in the second half, are quite narrow start of the second half. This meant that the full backs were having to go and win the ball higher up the pitch. And then once they were run higher up the pitch, um, if they were done, the balls played past them. It was a one-two play past them. The centre mids were trying to cover the gaps in between the in the wide areas, rather than the centre backs coming over, and that kept happening, uh, particularly on the right hand side. Um, and Joe Gomez couldn't cover that winger. That's why they got so many balls across the box in that start of the first half. It's because the, the centre backs were much more narrow than they usually are. I don't know if that's just because of Santi Bueno's presence or anything to do with that, but that was a big change. I mean, that that first 15, 20 minutes, that second half. We had loads of balls coming across that box and those wide areas were so exposed because the centre-backs were sort of wider but couldn't really get further forward. It was all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's something you have to look at for hopefully for, for Everton. Hopefully Craig Dawson's back in. Hopefully we can address that a little bit more and hopefully we can double up defending uh, out wide because we're quite narrow. Um, I've got Kuna here as well. Kuna did really well today, I thought. Led the line second, expecting the second half. That was tough. Uh, and then, obviously, to pounce on, on Dawson's... Um, on Kilman's second mistake to carry the ball through. Lovely, lovely little pass to um, to Bellegarde to Wong for everyone and obviously finished it for a good goal. So well done to him as well. He's just took that struggle out there on his own, um, particularly when Hwang had gone off. So it, it was really important that. Um, I think we you now we can push on to Everton. Obviously in a couple of days' time, we've got Everton at home. We're in good form at home. Let's see if we can kick on a little bit further. Um, let's see what we can do, really. Because I think if we can if we can beat Everton, I know it's a big if, because they're in good form at the moment. If we can beat Everton, I think we can really start looking up the table then, see how we can get towards those bottom end, those European places, and see if we can have a really good season with a few additions in January. Um, hopefully, I'll catch you on the next one. Well, that was something different for Wolves fans. Uh, I think the last time I saw we scored three goals in the first half was against Watford in March last year. So it was a welcome surprise to see three goals in the first half. In a first half, that was... Very, very end-to-end. -end. Uh, I think neither team were comfortable with the defending. I think we really miss Craig Dawson for a kind of defensive organisation. You can see that. I think, the, you know, I said it last game, there were players running into each other. It was pinball around the box. I don't think anyone was taking control. That should be the job of Max Kilman as the captain, but... We haven't seen that and I don't think we will see that as long as he is captain. So that's a shame It's and that's one negative and the only negative I will point out. Uh, after a, a very clinical performance from Wolves, I think we had four shots on target and four goals. Admittedly, we were gifted two of the goals by uh, ex-Wolves ex player Nathan Collins who had an absolute nightmare today. Um, I feel a bit sorry for him because it's not like he left in a in a in a way that would kind of uh, unsettle the fans and you know you know deserve booze when he comes to Molyneux and what have you. But yeah, I felt a bit sorry for him. But he had a he had a shocker today, and we took advantage of it. Huang Hee Chan for his first goal um, took it around the keeper and, and scored. It'll be the easiest goal he gets all season. That puts him on that put him on nine, and then his tenth goal of the season in the Premier League was sublime. Absolutely sublime. The way he took it over, uh, I think it was Pinnock. I might be wrong with that, but uh, 
the composure. It's a guy who's so confident in front of goal and we can see that and we're reaping the rewards from it. So long may it continue. Um, I think Wolves were poor. Uh, I think the game management was poor. Not Wolves weren't poor. I think the game management was poor from O'Neill. I think we sat back too often and allowed Brentford to uh, create too many chances, you know, swing too many balls into the area. I think on a, another day, we could have conceded a whole lot more had they had the players available that they would have wished. I think it was a very weakened, weakened Brentford side. And I think we took advantage of that and it's, you know, we scored four goals, we've won four one in London, which does does not happen. So I'm pleased, but there is still a lot to work on and uh let's hope let's hope it happens ahead of Everton because that's gonna be a tough game because they're in good form. Uh I'll see you then Wolves fans. Take care. Performance tonight. Didn't expect to come to Brentford and end up winning four one. Uh, very kind of Nathan Collins at Christmas time to gift us two goals. Um I think it's best his play since we since we signed him really. A couple of assists from him tonight, which was which was nice, but it's nice to see us take our chances. Um, too often this season, you know, been gifted the ball from the opposition and it hasn't ended up in the back of the net. But that was the difference tonight, really. We took our chances and Brentford didn't take theirs. But um, yeah, Wang and Kuna, uh, both looking very, very sharp. Um, Bellegarde finished his cross well, finished his chance well when Kuna got on the end of it and passed it to him. And I say, I think that's the difference. Too, too often this season, we'd have got in that position and have put it wide or got a block in. But yeah, finished, finished all the goals well. Um, Sarabia with an ex excellent ball in for the first one and Lamina on the score sheet again and he's, he's getting more and more consistent as the weeks go on and I have to say I don't think any of them put a, a foot wrong today um, fear the worst with Dawson out I think we might miss him at the back but Santiago Bueno came in and did a really really good job um, perhaps got a little bit flat footed for, for Brentford's goal um, but other than that I thought he had a very very solid game and if I'm going to be slightly negative which I'm reluctant to do when we've won 4-1 but Conceding again straight after scoring the second was frustrating and, and almost a, a carbon copy of Chelsea, really, just switching off after we scored and dropping too deep. Um, but they then re regrouped at half-time, um, weathered the storm a little bit second half, which I think we needed to do. You knew Brentford were going to come out and be lively. They had to be, really, um, with the score as it was. But, um, yeah, weathered the storm well and ultimately got the fourth goal and, and sealed the game. And so six points return from Chelsea at home and Brentford away is, is a very, very good return. And Everton now on Saturday, um, another big game. They're obviously in good form. But at home, you'd fancy us to go out and, and do a job. So, yeah, re really, really good shift from all the boys today. And especially when we played two, three days ago and Brentford haven't played for about two weeks. Um, you know, it didn't look that way. And we were definitely the much sharper Um Gary O'Neill made some some you know, good substitutions, really. I didn't like going 5-4-1, um, but ultimately we saw the game out comfortably um, and actually could have had a couple more with Kuna hitting the post and Bellegarde running around Collins like he weren't there and, and got a shot away. So, um, yeah, all in all, very, very good performance and on to Everton on Saturday. So it's finished. Wolves 4, Brentford 1. Um, you push all negatives aside. You look at that Wolves team tonight and you say that's where we want to be every week because there's, there's countless teams in the Premier League that are better better outfit than Brentford um, and we've gone there tonight we've smashed them and you look at the likes of West Ham the other week um, Chelsea you can't fault the game we played against Chelsea but you look at West Ham and, and similar games to that and you say well, Wolves are better than that but like I said tonight we uh, concentrate on what we've done tonight and Huangy Chan Brilliant, Cunha, brilliant, Gomez, Lamina, the usuals that all put a shift in. And I think tonight you look at it and you go, everything clicked, everything that Gary O'Neill wanted to happen, happened. And what they've been practising worked. And you can't come away tonight and go, so and so was all right. They've all been brilliant tonight. And that's, you, you know, you can't fault that. Um, Subs were right from Gary, um, the way he managed the game. There's been questions of that in the recent weeks. How has he gone on to manage games and try to get his results? But today he was perfect. I know we had a couple of goals in our advantage and it was looking like there was no reason at all to go and lose the game. But you still got to manage it right. He did. Um, players are all playing for him and the fans. Um, they absolutely love it. Um, you got... Tommy Doyle as well, he's given me a shirt, he came over after the game as well, um, so like I said, 
absolutely brilliant. Um, I just think we've got to carry on now. I think we can invite Everton now on the 30th and give a bloody good whack, I think. So keep going and get as high as we can. We'll just get safe and then people can start to relax a little bit more then. So, yeah, like I said, absolutely br bloody brilliant tonight. And uh, come on, you wolves. <laughs>